Today, I wanna have a discussion of talking about the problem with financial literacy. There are many false narratives that are perpetrated on the internet. And one of the biggest false narratives is that people actually get rich in the stock market. Do you know that 10% of America owns 90% of the stocks? So it is a false narrative that the average person actually gets rich in the stock market. Now, Google how many people actually get rich in the stock market. And what you will come up with is a ton of articles talking about how it is possible to get rich in the stock market. Not the actual number of people who have gotten rich in the stock market, but they're talking about it is possible. It is possible. It's not a reality. Because I was doing some research this morning because you know I was thinking about financial literacy. And the other day I had someone who was simply lying. He said he had a net worth of eight figures and he didn't consider himself wealthy. And it got me to thinking, how many people are actually financially literate? Because there's so many misconceptions out there. And one of the biggest misconceptions, because I get it a lot, because I am currently not in the stock market. And because whenever I talk about getting wealthy and making money, many people want to challenge that because I'm not in the stock market, which tells me that the false narrative of the average person getting rich in the stock market is so widespread. I found an article that I posted in the community section. The average person who gets rich in America gets rich through a business. And you know, it got me thinking. One of the things is that people do not want to um, do what is hard. This video was brought to you by Glendon Cameron School, the home of the flagship course, Home Economics. Now, is there anything sexy about managing your money correctly? Absolutely. I want you to think of a situation where you're not broke, struggling, and you have money in the bank. That is what Home Economics will do for you. And if you really, really want to make your thing snazzy, learn how to manage your money and then learn how to make money. That's going to be happening in the rebirth of Hustlers Kung Fu. Links below. So let's get in this conversation about financial literacy. When you say financial literacy, there are certain assumptions that come to mind. And basically, since we have had a historically high stock market, everything is kind of centered on stocks. Now, why do I, now, I have friends who make a lot of money in the stock market, but they're seasoned traders, and they're not trading from a $20,000 account. My friend who makes the most money from options is trading with a $10 million account. So when he risks, four to 10%, that's a lot of money without blowing up his account. And it got me to thinking, the problem with financial literacy is everyone is marketing to you products and ideals and concepts that are in their best interest. I will say Graham Stephan, meet Kevin, Andre Jack, financial education, all of these guys are pushing stock market investing. Why? Because if you put up a YouTube video talking about stock market investing, stock market um, 
companies will run ads on your channel and these ads pay the highest ad rate of any type of content. And the next second highest um, ad rates is crypto. Yield farming, auto cake, once again. So these YouTube facilitators are creating content that is in their best interest and your financial health be damned. They don't give a shit about you because I've looked at it and I've studied it and I've crunched the numbers and like, you know, I've literally thought about starting a crypto channel. Andre Jung, not, uh, Brian Jung, and some other people's channels have, and Alex Becker, these channels have literally exploded because they're talking about crypto. And one of, and this is my thoughts with crypto. Are there some good use case crypto that have some type of function? Absolutely. But the lion's share of crypto is garbage. But why are people um, moving toward crypto? And this is the basis of my thesis. The average person doesn't want to work. Elon Musk has said it. I have been saying this for years and everyone is looking for a rent seeking device where you can extract a lot of value without doing shit. And this is one of the things that is killing people. If you were, listen to me and listen to me well, and I have a lot of people who, cause I, I wanna think like, why do people come after me for preaching? I will admit, I evangelize starting a business. Why do I evangelize starting a business? Starting a business literally has changed my life. I drive a Porsche that I paid cash for. I drive a BMW that I paid cash for. I live in a high rise apartment. Um, I use my credit cards like debit cards. Before I make a purchase, I actually have the cash money in the bank to pay off my credit cards when the transaction actually posts. It usually takes two to three days that once you use your credit card for the transaction to actually post where you can then make a payment. This morning, I paid off $15,000 in credit card usage, not credit card debt, because it doesn't report to my credit um, bureaus. And why can I do this? Because I have a business. One of the things that you guys have got to understand that many of the people on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram are marketing to you in their best interest. Let me say this again. Stock market commercials, crypto commercials are, are pay the highest ad rates. So this is why all of these guys are pushing the stock market. Now, I'm about to speak rugged and reckless. I have been trying to school your dumb ass for years. Once again, the average person is never going to get rich in the stock market. You want to know why? The average person doesn't have enough capital. So let me go ahead and tell you what put me on this path. Years and years ago, I was living in the boarding house and I was in massive pain. Because there are many of you who are in moderate to low grade pain. You drive a shitty car, you live in a shitty place, you're fucking a bitch that you don't like most of the time because that's all you can do, but you're not in enough pain to fucking change. So I was in pain where I live because I was living in the room with no heat or air. I was in pain professionally because I was working all these shitty jobs. And it just got to the point where I got sick and tired of being in pain, which produced me to create massive action, to create massive change. And once I got that job at Rent-A-Crate, my life has been on an upward trajectory ever since. Because I know 
what waits for me if I fall. Now I'm in a pretty solid position, so me falling off or it, it ain't gonna happen. Um, as I'm about to say something, because many of you choose to pull, because one of the things is, and I'm, I'm gonna say it, I am great. And for some of you, that's offensive. For some of you, go ahead, Glendon. I appreciate you. I think you're great. I can actually say I am great. I am accomplished. I've done shit. I don't have a self-esteem problem. And one of the things that I can say and look back as a list of accomplishments, and for some reason, there's a certain group, I'm not talking to the nerd gang, the nerd tribe, you guys love me and appreciate me and the love is reciprocal, I appreciate you. But for some reason, there's a bunch of low intellect hating bitches that love to watch this channel and love to try to challenge my assertions. Yes, I evangelize starting a business because it has literally fucking changed my life. Alex Becker starting a business has changed his life. Christian Guzman starting a business has changed his life. Max Chewing starting a business has changed his life. These are people you can Google and look at. Mike Rashid started a business and it's changed his life. This false trope that you're gonna get rich in the stock market that's pushed by Dave Ramsey and many other people ain't going to work out for the average person. I listen to Dave Ramsey and frequently, a lot of people who call into his show have incomes of 150 to $200,000. So 30, you know, 20% of 150, that's $30,000 a year. That is the amount of capital that you need to invest in these slow growing investments to become a millionaire in 20 to 30 years. That's the type of cash that you need, which leaves out 81% of America. 81% of America has an income problem. You're not stupid, you're not lazy, but you don't make enough money. And that's where I was years and years ago. Uh, Wall Street Trapper says something that I agree with. He said he's never seen anyone with two jobs that really their life improved. At one point, I had three jobs, full-time job, a part-time job, and a PRN job. And my life didn't get any better. You wanna know when my life got better? That first business. And one of the things, because of my history, and the lesson that I learned by setting up a savings account taught me to be a prodigious saver. And one of the things that I did, which I feel is very wise, I had a six-figure job and, and I had a six-figure business and I did them concurrently. So all of the money from my <coughs> business, in, you know, business, it went straight to the bank. And once again, there are many folks on YouTube who will tell you, savers are losers, savers are losers, because it's in their best interest to get you to invest your shillings, your nickels, your dimes in the, invest in the stock market, because that makes them wealthy because of the ads that are run on their YouTube channels. I'm here to tell you from personal experience, Starting a business was one of the, if not, actually I'm gonna say it, starting a business has been the best decision I've ever made in my life. And this is some of the benefits. First of all, freedom. I don't have to work some shit job. I don't have to do some shit I don't wanna do because I have a business that provides me income for me to live the way that I want to. That's number one. Number two, when you build a business and you do the hard work of finding your customer base, audience and serving your customer base and serving your people, your confidence goes through the roof. A lot of you hate the fact that I am so 
confident. You hate the fact that I can say, I'm great. I wrote a book. I have a YouTube channel. I've built all these businesses. I've made all this money. A lot of you are offended because you haven't done shit in your worthless ass life. Get the fuck off your sorry ass and get to work and stop fucking hating, you hating ass bitch. I'm sick of y'all. You just want to sit at home in your mother's basement hating. And I saw this with my first version of Disruptive Mail, which will bring me to um, my other benefit. Started a business, I got money, my confidence, my confidence level grew. You see how I'm dressed? I have approached drop dead, stunning, beautiful women dressed like this. Not in a suit, not in a nice outfit. And you know what? Sometimes it didn't work out. And I remember this cute girl that was at Whole Foods. I was in, I had just left the gym. So I was a little funky and she was so cute. She had on this pencil skirt. She had on these high heels and I was like, damn. Cause I walked by her and I was like, damn, you look good. And she smiled and I was like, all right, I know you're shopping and stuff. But what's your number? We need to go out because you are just fucking delicious. She gave me her number. I called her and then I went ahead and set up a date. And when she, for our date, she had on this silk dress, some more high heels. She was looking fucking delicious. And we had a nice little date. What did I do at the end of the date? I did my formatting, grabbed those titties, kissed her, played with the pussy and ended up fucking her. You guys, you wusses, you wimps, you don't have the courage to approach the type of woman that you actually want because you're a weak little bitch. And that's why you hate me because I am not the most handsome guy in the world. I'm not, I'm a realist. I know exactly what I look like, but I fight above my weight class. I be pulling chicks because I think that I can. My pregnant girlfriend, someone put in there, you got a white wife. She cute though. She cute. Other day, you know, cause she, you know, she's really showing. She had on this uh, dress and these high heels and we went out and everyone was like, damn, you're the cutest little pregnant woman ever. And you, you guys, um, you don't understand because here is one of the reasons with financial literacy. You don't know what you don't know. So this is easy for the Graham Steffens, the Meek Kevins, the financial literacy, Andre Jack. Like I have a problem with Andre Jack. Andre Jack's YouTube channel blew up on dividend investing, something that he doesn't do anymore. Once he started making real money, he had the epiphany that dividend investing wasn't the best place to put his money. Now, I'm gonna give you an example of <clears throat> how I would get into dividend investing. If I played the lottery and I won $20 million after taxes, I would take 15 million and put it in dividend stock. I didn't have to earn that money. It's just like, bam, here's 15 million. Because for each million, I would get 30, let's say $40,000. So that's 400, that's like $700,000 a year passive income. And I didn't have to do anything to, to earn it. One of the reasons I don't put money in the stock market, understand there is this principle that I have called money velocity. And this is one of the reasons that I don't worry about inflation. Yes, I have money in the bank. Yes, I am losing purchasing power. But because I have a business, it makes money so fast that I never feel inflation. I never feel it. I don't feel it. Uh, when I go get gas, I fill my gas tank. I just don't feel it because my mental is about getting more money getting more money, getting more money coming in. 
So I don't worry about inflation. I don't worry about a lot of the stuff. Like the average person uh, is fucked. The average person is about to go through a very rough three to five years. And it doesn't have to be that way, but you're listening to all of this fake ass financial literacy advice that is not going to help you. It's just simply not going to help you because you don't have enough money to deploy the advice. Because once again, uh, I'm at this point where I'm on a mission to become a different type of YouTuber. The information that I will give you guys will be factual, useful, and helpful. I'm not going to bullshit you with something because this, this is one of the reasons I can do this. I make way more money from my business than I do from YouTube. And YouTube money is only really starting to get significant the last two years. And this is something else. You know, a lot of you wonder, it's like, how do I make my money? Because uh, I sell online courses. And many of you is like, it'd be great if you interview your students. All right, let me go ahead and tell you some stuff. My most successful students do not want to come on YouTube. They don't want to come on YouTube. Uh, the woman I helped with the cleaning company, she don't want to come on YouTube. You want to know why? Because of you fuckers. The average person doesn't want to be exposed to internet fuckery. Because what's going to happen? I remember this years and years ago. I was dating this girl on Facebook and I put that we were in a relationship on Facebook when that was a thing. And she had an internet website, she had e-commerce. Then everybody started going to her website and jacked up her analytics. And she was really pissed at that. She's like, because they were going to their website to be nosy. They weren't going to the website to actually buy shit. So her analytics got all messed up for three months. And this is one of the things that, cause see, you know, uh, I'm gonna say something. A lot of you who want to see someone else win, and I'm gonna explain to you why that is not a good concept. Let's say you have student A, and student A takes my course and makes a million dollars. Then you have student B, and student B takes my course and makes 50,000. See, interviewing my most successful students would actually be doing you a disservice because this is something I've learned being an educator. There are some students that are just simply better than others. So it's not going to help you for me to interview my top 10% students because you do not have the material. You don't have the attributes that these people do. Case in point, um, when I was doing 30 days to 2,500, I had a guy uh, who was doing 10,000. He took the course and he went from 10,000 to 30,000. Why did he do that? Number one, he already had a business. Number one, it was already making money. Number two, Number three, I was able to fill in the gaps that he did not know, he did not know, and he was missing, and he was able to 3X his income by taking my course. Now, if you go ahead and take one of my courses and you don't have a business, let me be 100% honest, you're looking at a three to five year journey. And I say that, and a lot of people get turned off because it's like, I want it now, man, I need my money now. This is why people are getting into trucking. This is why, like Alex of Good Energy, Alex, I think it's a good dude, but Alex makes more money selling online courses than he does make from trucking. So online courses can be extremely profitable. And one of my fiduciary duties to my student is to give you accurate information and to tell you the truth. Because if you go ahead and take, like this is one of the things I'm getting ready to do with business fundamental education. Now, fundamentals are so important. Give you a good real life example. Remember the Fab Five of Michigan and when they played Duke in the national championship? From a pure athletic standpoint, the Duke Five, Fab, Fab Five, really Fab Six, because they had a guy who was on the bench, he would have started somewhere else. They played Duke from athletic ability, raw athletic ability, 
Michigan killed Duke. But Duke was a fundamentally, a basketball fundamentally sound team. And one of the things is that Duke did really well back then is they played fundamental sound team ball. Uh, Duke didn't have the stars that Michigan had and they beat them in a national championship because they were fundamentally sound. And if you wanna win in the game of business, you need to be fundamentally sound. You need to know, because this is how I can look at these bullshit YouTube videos and know these fuckers are lying. Because I'm like, I'm fundamentally sound. Profit, loss, revenue, marketing, sales. I'm fundamentally sound in these things. And this is the stuff I'm gonna teach you. And once again, so many people don't want to do the hard work. And the way that I'm going to teach this class is to make you a successful business owner that creates a profitable business. <coughs> One of the reasons that I am calling my new podcast, which should launch next week, The Art of Profit. See, when you go to Google and you look up what's a good profit margin, you will see 5% is a low profit margin, 10% is a moderate profit margin, and 20% is a high profit margin, right? Who are we talking about? Those profit margins are horrible for your average small business. They're talking about multi-billion dollar corporations. So if you have a 20% profit margin and you sell 100 billion a year, you made 20 billion in profit. See, they're not talking about small business. One of the things you as a small business owner have to ensure that you make the most profit possible because you cannot play those corporate games. You cannot run your small business the same way that Apple or Google or Amazon runs. You can't do that. So one of the things that you have to do, and this is something I've been really good at, is I keep my business expenses down. For years and years and years, I really controlled my expenses and ensured that I had a high degree of profitability. And this is something that I can teach you how to do because you go ahead, you start a business, and you don't, you don't know the fundamentals, you have no concept of what you're doing, and I'm not saying you're stupid, usually a lot of people who stick with it long enough figure it out, but I can teach you in one year what it could take you 10 to 15 years to figure out. And that's valuable, because one of the things that I've learned is you have a business, and look, your first year, you make 20,000. Your next year, you wanna make 40. This should be a written goal and then you start looking at your business and what you can do to increase your revenue. You press upon that because every year you have a business and a lot of you don't know this, you're supposed to make more money. So your first year you make 20, your second year you make 40, your third year you make 60. When I started here on YouTube with Conundrum Publishing, my first year I made 62,000, my second year I made 92,000, my third year I made 1.5 million. Boom, boom, boom. That's how you're supposed to run the business. You should not be struggling. You shouldn't be chasing customers. If you're struggling, there's some things that you're not doing correct, correctly. So if you do the right things, you set up your marketing. There are newsletters here on the internet that make 50 million a year. Newsletters, subscription newsletters. So there's a multitude of businesses and we're going to be talking about it because once again, I'm going to start this podcast. I'm going to start getting into the fundamental business training because see, it's going to help you when you start your business to know what you should expect. It's going to help you because once again, I posted in the community section of the Glendon Cameron School and on this channel. The average wealthy person in America got there through a business, not the fucking stock market. That is one of the biggest fucking lies on the planet, but a lie told a million times 
it's soon because you cannot even you can I mean because this is one of the things when you go to the Google machine and you put in these search queries if you put in do business owners make more money than investors you will yield no results you will yield a whole bunch of stuff about investing because people aren't asking the right question at scale they're not asking the right question Gary V how did he get his money business Richest people in the world, business owners. And then people like, um, I got a video on um, Glenn and Cameron School talking about the fallacy of young people. And someone was talking about bad Barbie and she, she's 19 years old. And I'm just sitting there like, if you, like, here's the thing, and I'm gonna do a whole video on it. Bad Barbie was on Dr. Phil in 2016. She was 13 years old. Okay, that show gave her nationwide, no, international name brand recognition. Then she started appearing in rap videos. Then she built an Instagram that has 16 million followers. Then she jumped on OnlyFans and made $52 million. If she was not on Dr. Phil, that wouldn't have happened with OnlyFans. Because see, this is the business education. I can look back and see what she did and accurately forecast and look at her moves. Right now, there are a bunch of girls on Instagram with large followings and they just hop on OnlyFans and a lot of these chicks ain't even taking their clothes off and they will make crazy money because they already have a following. They already have a following. That's something that you can, and I got a $10,000 bet with someone on the other channel who feels that she's gonna be able to get rich from the internet literally overnight. 1% of millionaires are under the age of 35. The average millionaire in America is 62 fucking years old. 62 fucking years old. Yes. Are there millionaires under the age of 35? Absolutely. There's a billionaire, Sam Bankman Freed, who got in the crypto space. He's a billionaire. I think he's under 30. But for every Sam Brick, Sam Bankman Freed, there's 50 old guys who are rich. Or 60 or 70 or maybe let's just say 100. So one of the things is with financial literacy is people are not teaching you financial literacy. They're marketing an agenda. And that agenda has got so many of you twisted up. Someone left a comment, you lost all credibility because you're not in the stock market. Let me say something. I make more money than anyone other than a hedge fund or someone with millions of dollars. The average retail investor, I would make more money in one month than they will make in 20 fucking years. 20 fucking years. So go ahead. You cannot dispute anything that I put in this video because it's based on data, facts, and accurate uh, analysis. You're not getting rich in the stock market no time soon because you don't have enough money. Facts, as they say in these internet streets. Facts!